Okay, so I am back with this S8. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember where I was at with this. Okay, so I'm back with this S8 for data recovery. Um, so I guess where I left off was I had found a shorted cap here, uh, which is removed. And then uh, this chip looked like, uh, I forget, I think it was getting hot. Um, and then I needed to replace this connector that things got a little too hot there and something pushed those pins over. So go ahead and get started with this. This, I believe, is a baseband PMIC. So I'm going to put this on first, and then before I worry about the, uh, the LCD connector, I'm going to just see if I get a normal kind of boot up current draw on DC power supply. So, yeah, bouncing up from about 300 milliamps up to 600, down to 200, back to 300, down to 200. So that looks really promising. So, go ahead and get this connector off. Get a new one on here and see if we have image. One thing I've noticed, <clears throat> um, I haven't worked on a lot of S8s yet, but out of the ones that I have, um, they seem to take a lot more heat than um, than even the S7, and than any previous Samsung board. So it seems like they may be, uh, there may be a lot more copper in these boards than there used to be. Um, maybe the 
processors Samsung is using are now at the point that they run so hot that they've got to <laughs> start paying a little bit extra in production cost in copper. It's definitely much, much more difficult to get the shields off in the S8 and the S8 Plus. Um, it's, I would say it's comparable to the lower shield on the 6 that uh, everybody has trouble with. It's, it's actually difficult to get these off at all. So keep that in mind if you decide to work on one. Um, you know, you run a very high risk of um, causing other damage, particularly because the PMIC in the in the S8 and S8 Plus is underfilled. So, um, you know, big risk there. And then you've got, you know, this chip. Not not sure what what he is, but he's underfilled, and your CPU and your uh, UFS chip all underfilled. So when you're taking this big shield that in and this shield covers everything, it's not like the other ones where you could just pop it off. Um, when you're taking that off, you got to be really careful not to overheat things. Um, all right, let's get back to this. Oh, well, so much for that. Oh, man, the battery on that camera does not last long at all. I streamed for just under an hour a little bit earlier. That's the only thing I've done with that camera since it was fully charged. One of these days, I'm going to take the $40 a month in ad revenue that the channel makes and save it up and spend on some nicer cameras. All right, come on. Just want you tacked down there. I'm just trying to get this guy just tacked down enough that he's not going to move around. Come on, why are you not soldering? What the hell? Oh, it's too high because of this. Ah, oh, man. I am getting tired. All right, you're on there now.
All right, that'll work. Now I'll go through and quickly just touch up the joints with the hot tweezers. Just want to make them look a little better. Make sure nothing's, no weak joints. And I'm not worried about how they look right now. I'm just trying to get a little bit of solder onto each joint. And then I'm going to hit it with the hot air to tighten everything up, make it look nice, make nice joints. flux and there we go Now it's time to clean this up and see if it is indeed booting and showing me an image. That would be awesome. I don't like the look of that joint. Much better. Okay. All right, let's get that screen over here. Trying to go ahead and hook up the dock. That way, if it is booting up, I can start pulling data without having to take it back out again. So, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the first part of the video, um, but in the S8 and the S7, um, and and every Samsung going forward, uh, it's going to be just like with Apple phones, where uh, encryption is enabled by default. So from day one, these devices are encrypted, and the only way to get access to the data is to have it boot natively. All right, let's see see if I have charge on the battery. I'm going to guess probably not because there was a short. Usually that drains the battery fully. No, well, we got 3.8. So, all right. Well, then I'm going to try and boot this off of battery. And that way I can hopefully with the microscope camera pick up image, you know, show that it is booting up. All right, let's see what we have. Uh, 
and nothing. Okay, so it's possible that the S8 may want a little more than 3.8 to initially boot. I'm not sure, so I'm just going to go ahead and go back to DC power supply. Find a good ground to clip onto. All right, so prompting to boot. Oh, well, <laughs> uh. That's real smart, Mark. Okay, so the, the way that the power button works is it's on a little flex that runs to two pins that I was bridging with, uh, with the tweezers. Just want to make sure that's not anything I need to worry about. No, that's fine. It's just some junk. Okay, so I was bridging those with the tweezers, um, but now that it's in the frame, uh, the power button, they, the little springs touch two pads. Um, so the problem is because there's no screws in here, uh, it was, there was no pressure there. So prompting to boot now, um, oh, no, prompting to boot now, and there we go. And I have image, Galaxy S8 Plus, all right, so this is booting up, um, I'm 100% confident that touch is going to work. Uh, if for whatever reason I need to work on this more, I will start recording again. But I'm going to go ahead and call this one fixed and get it to uh, start recovering. Let me just check real quick and see if it will boot off of that battery so I don't have to charge it. All right, there we go. Uh, yeah, so this was a shorted cap, and also, um, I, I, it's been it's been a couple of days since I did the first part of the video, so I can't really remember how I came to the conclusion that baseband uh, PMIC was bad. I'm not sure if I nicked it when I was removing the shield, or if uh, if it was getting hot, um, <laughs> I probably should have rewatched the first half of this video before I started recording again. Uh, but anyways, uh, knock that cap off, replace baseband PMIC, and uh, replace the LCD connector that got a little melty. And now we're good to go. This one is solved. Uh, so. Thanks for watching and have a good one.